Welcome to the Kosi Kosi podcast, a brand that stands for all things owning your power. In other words, we have conversations with individuals from different walks of life, understanding that how did you get to the point of owning your true power and what did you do to get to that point of owning that power? Welcome to another episode of the Kosim Kosi uh, podcast, a brand that stands for all things owning your power. In other words, individuals that have had to overcome so many challenges and they're now operating in their true power. We believe that confidence is something that comes from within you. And we also believe that clothing is a part of all that process. And that's why we warn our clients that when draped in Kosingosi, they will be definitely getting compliments and stares. In studio today, I've got a powerhouse of a woman. She's god fearing she's brilliant. Um, she's a South African model, a TV presenter and radio host. She was crowned Miss South Africa Team uh, 2006, very well known for hosting the SABC music award shows, uh, I mean music show Selima Matunzi. And when I tell you, I have never missed an episode of Selima Matunzi Tukutuku because of... <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Welcome, Chancy. You're the Pilin Kosi. What an awesome introduction. Now I hope I live up to that. Thank you for having me today. That's a big compliment <laughs> coming from someone who is the most brilliant person I've seen when it comes to TV presenting. Like I just said, I tuned into that show specifically because I wanted to watch you. And another thing that I really, really, really enjoyed watching you is that you unapologetically rocked your afro, you up and unapologetically sure. <laughs> rocked your natural hair. And for me, that is a beauty standard that you've set because there's probably someone who was sitting somewhere in Matadiela and they're like, I can also rock my afro and still look beautiful because of women like you who showed up to the industry and they set the record straight to say, hey, I'm going to show up as myself. Mm -hmm. Take me as I am. That was brilliant in my opinion and I really, really, really enjoyed watching that. Thank you. I think part of what you said in your introduction, the kind of woman a Kosingosi woman is, is one who owns her power. And I think a big part of that is that when women work together or you build upon what other Others have done like it really has an impact yeah. and so I certainly was not the first person to wear natural hair at TV but I think I recognize the value in diversifying the images that we saw especially as young people of what beauty is especially in an African context so um, and I love that we've now moved in a direction where whatever a woman wants to do with her hair is embraced and that was always the thing where we're not forced in one direction but that we can choose the way we want to present ourselves and represent ourselves I could have never said it any better <laughs> yes and also watching people like um, Zozibini uh, Tun Sure. at Miss World rocking her short hair. Like yeah. you guys have just been taking the bar and raising it and mm. we love that for you and that's why we have to celebrate women like yourself. Oh, I'm so happy to have you in studio today. So welcome. I'm to moving this. in. <laughs> I'm not leaving now. Yes, she actually said that she's I'm the co-pilot now. <laughs> <laughs> we are always happy to have you here. So because we really want to zone in on individuals that are sure. doing well for themselves, um, we, that I have, you know, Bro broke a lot of boundaries. And we know that people have a lot of struggles within mm. themselves, even battles that they're fighting and we know nothing about. We just see um, the face on TV who's sure. doing amazing things, but we really just want to put that human element behind it. Uh, and on today's episode, I really just would like to find out from mm. you um, anything where you have, anything or any time where you have found yourself um, fighting a battle and you overcame it and then you look back and you reflected, I, I really did that. I, I'm so grateful I, 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 I 
overcame that. Yeah. Just take me through any part of your life, any experience that you have of that sort. Mm. I think the, the journey of overcoming is a constant one for any human, but probably it has a few more dynamics when you're a black young person in any industry that you're trying to succeed in. Um, of the different things I have overcome, maybe today I'll share a little bit about personal identity. Um, and that one was the one that struck me, you know, moving from Okulela Edujwa into a former Model C school where the people you see around you don't necessarily look like you. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily express themselves the way you do or have the same sort of cultural references or traditions as you. And this is something I sort of grew up with, stepping even into the Miss SA teen space, which is where first people got to know me on a larger scale, I would say, um, is what, what is identity for the individual, for the individual young person? Um, how does language factor into that? How does choice of what you wear factor into that? Um, I remember being as young as 18, uh, suddenly thrust into the media space and now being critiqued on my choice of outfits. I mean, I, whatever you want to wear is what you want to wear, <laughs> surely. You want to look right? Yeah. But when you have this pressure of people that you look up to that don't necessarily understand where you're at or resonate with that part of your journey, that can really have an impact on you. And so for me, I've tried as best as I can to advocate for each individual to know that our identity is so personal to us. Who do they want to be? Who do they want to be? to reference and the world and particularly the media space needs to make space for that. Yeah. Um, I advocate for inclusion and I would, I would probably describe it as the person who is just a little bit outside of the circle, mm -hmm. the alternative or the other. Uh, but it's not an easy conversation to have with yourself, one, being that young, and two, when so many people are watching the moves that you make. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time, you know, the expectation in a particular industry is that you would look and represent and present yourself a certain way. But if that's not what resonates with you, um, and so a lot of times I would ask myself a question, am I good enough? Enough? Am I doing enough? Am I still being true to representing because that's my grounding. I, I don't care the amount of success I get in the world. Yeah. That will always be my foundation. Uh, I may evolve, I may grow, um, but I always want to be true to that person. It's important for me. We can speak English till it comes out of our nose, but if we don't settle in the space of who we really are, no matter where you go, you will always feel like you don't belong. And if there's one thing I would absolutely hope a young person takes from me and my journey, um, a young black woman in particular, or maybe someone who feels a little bit excluded, because I think it is important also to bring in the LGBT um, plus community in conversations that we have. Yeah. I would hope that anyone who references even a little bit to my story, they know that you can choose your identity, stand on your identity and make sure that you you don't renege and let people decide who you should or should not be. Yeah. yeah. This is very affirming for me mm. because just outside I was having a conversation with Kosi and sure. it was very emotional. So I was a little bit intimidated by women like yourself. Like I said, I've been a fan, right? I've been watching you guys on TV mm. and I was having a conversation with her on how we want to, you know. Mm. And she said, listen, remember that you are you and mm -hmm. don't move away from that. And you actually <laughs> tapping into the direction of the conversation that we just had is, is a big affirmation for me. And also anyone else who is struggling with mm. their identity right now, who's, who's trying to live up to the standards of the people around them, they are definitely reassured by this because then they know they can be themselves yeah. and still be recognized in, the, in their community. I also think a big aspect of, of being a powerful person in whichever way we understand that, right? And this is what I think is a big part of this brand, Kosingosi Woman. It is not that you would have achieved all these things yeah. and then you walk around and intimidate people. No. Exactly. <laughs> it should be that you can be in a space comfortably with people and allow them to unlock the very best of themselves. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like if I sit talking to you, I'm just as willing to learn and hear from your life experiences, something I can take of value as I would hope and imagine that you would be from mine. It's not a one-sided thing. Life is not a battle of hierarchy, who's at the top and who's not. Everyone has a story. We can learn from everybody's journey. A big part of continuing to advance in life, or at least in my perspective, remain open, remain humble, and remain always willing to listen yeah. to people. Yeah. Always willing. I listen more than I talk. I know most people think I talk more than, <laughs> but I actually listen. I, don't, I, don't, I, I can believe that because I also have that aspect. As much as I'm such a talker, sure. I've also got times where I'm opening myself up to learning. Like uh, nothing is too small for me to learn. I was even talking to the crew now yeah. and asking them about the sound, the lighting. Yes. That's the kind of person I am also. Just open to learn. No In one charge. is too small, no one is too big. <laughs> and yeah, that's very um, affirming. Because when you get to international <laughs> stages, you don't want to still be asking, oh, what does this do? Like you must walk on set and be a professional and you'll be like, I remember the Kosu Kosu podcast <laughs> and the crew taught me this. And you know, yeah, you walk yeah, in your that's vibes. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so what I've also noticed about you is your work ethic. I've got an eye for people who work, like mm. fighters, people who make the decisions in their head that this is what they're going to do and they sure. go for it. So I always watch people on journeys like yourself. Mm. And another thing that I've noticed also about you is your work ethic. I'm obsessed about people that really put in the work because nothing falls from the sky. As much as we are believers of God and he's promising us everything, but he's always asking for mm. that little bit of leap of faith from our side. And you have been that woman. You're mm. a God-fearing woman now. You put God first in everything you do. Mm. Uh, what are you currently working on now that makes you wake up in the morning and you're I'm going to stand for this cause. I'm going to put in my work. I'm going to, sure. you know, put in everything for this to work. What are you currently doing? So I think on before on? I answer that question, I love that you said that there's also an action on our part yeah. in, in terms of responding to our faith. God actually calls us to partner with him. Yeah. So could you even imagine a collaboration. collaborating <laughs> with God about the things that you desire and the things that he desires for you? Um, and so for me, I've got a multiple, you know, sort of streamline of things that I'm interested in and participating in. I'm working a lot behind the scenes, which I love. Uh, sometimes when you are on-screen talent, sometimes people limit you to the things that they <laughs> know you to be able to do. So um, agency life is also one that has helped me quite a bit to diversify, working with a below-the-line agency, um, and then sort of working with small brands in terms of identifying what is their brand message and how do they best position and communicate that uh, in the media space, because I've done that for quite some time. Yeah. Um, although I haven't lectured TV and radio classes in a little while, that's something I probably want to circle back to because I really love it. Yeah. I think that if you can get the right kind of teachers uh, earlier on in your career, you can set yourself up right to thrive in the space that sometimes wants us to conform. Don't conform, <laughs> no matter what you do. Be the, one, be the outlier. Right. That's how you're going to be seen. Don't try to be a... <laughs> Zizo Chete. Yeah. There is one Zizo Chete in the country. Yeah. So now it be your own, you know. But, but I also think a big part of this, which sometimes we don't realize when we're young, don't be so focused on being performative. Yeah. Or oh, I have to do 10 things and therefore people find me valuable and therefore I'm well loved. No, you don't have to. Do, I haven't done a lot of things in mm -hmm. my career. There's people who probably have a CV that's 10 pages long, but I've done a few strategic things that I've done for a long time and I've done well in my life. So give it some thought. Don't feel like, oh, I have to follow the crowd because mm -hmm. everyone is going to such a place now you got to do it. Everyone is doing this thing now I got to do it no stick with remember it starts in that point we started with of identity mm -hmm. what do you want to establish what do you stand for and let everything that you do tie into that um, and and that's one of the things that I really love about the, the the approach I've taken to my career is that I've got clients that I've had for multiple years um, and and the relationship building part is what sustains you long term and and then people can also really start to see the impact of your contribution to an industry so I think it's important for young people in particular to remember don't always be chasing the crowd if mm. you are clear on your listen to me they can be going at 200 kilometers <laughs> per hour. It's good. And cheer other people yeah. on. That's great. That's their journey. Yeah. But if yours is to understand that slow and steady wins the race, then be slow and steady and be great at being slow and steady. And you build something solid for yourself because you want to look back and be like, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Slow and steady wins the race. Anyone that knows me and is in my close circle will tell you that I live by one motto. Sure. And that's, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah. I do everything with the principles of running a marathon. You have to yeah. pace yourself. If you sprint in a marathon from the get, listen, you're not going to make it. Mm. So you have to pace yourself. And yeah, so I love that. Probably, so, sorry, without yeah, interrupting you, I think no probably problem. the last thing I forgot to add when you asked me what are the things that I'm passionate about that I pour my attention into is teaching the word of God. Yes. Um, and maybe let me say preaching because teaching requires for me to have a formal qualification to be mm. a teacher and I'm not there yet, but mm. I'm working towards it. But I preach and I think it's important for us to understand this and I describe it in my mind as um, us being the grace generation. How do young people understand the grace that is provided for us? What does it look like for us in a daily lived out experience? And so I try and bring what the Bible teaches into what our lives look like and how we implement it and, and what God says about us and what he thinks and feels about us and sometimes rectifying um, the misconceptions that we've always had that you got to do something and then it must be pleasing to God and then he'll love you. No, he actually just loves you already. Listen, he loved us before we loved him. Mm -hmm. He introduced us to this love and we were like, oh, is yeah. that what you're about? Okay, we'll try. And we're not going to get yes. to a level, but we'll try. And the Bible teaches us actually that we were predestined, which means before time started, we were predestined for the good works that God has called us to and already empowered to do that. So could you imagine him trusting us with that responsibility, but yet not loving us? It just doesn't it make doesn't sense. It doesn't make sense. And so at the end of the day, no matter what anyone gets from what I teach, I will never not emphasize the fact that God loves us unconditionally. And it's important for us to know that because the world doesn't always love us. Okay. I'm going to tell you this now. I had, I had you mention teaching in a couple of, you know, phrases. Sure. And I think that's what you need to do. Don't feel sad that you don't have a qualification. Teachers are born. <laughs> <laughs> Teachers are born. So I, yeah. I can be your first student, in, especially the one where you want to teach about TV, film, sure. direction, all of those things. But I can also sit in your class where you talk about the Word of God because I'm always willing to give a lesson. Sure. If you were a dish, a plate of food, oh my and, you, gosh. and you were to serve yourself to people, what would you have? Do on I have that to plate? choose one thing? You can choose maybe two can dishes. Can it be seven colors? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's always you ready for seven colors. Yeah. yeah, I'll say seven colors because it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Sometimes okay. you feel like beetroot. Sometimes you want, yeah. you know, spinach. Sometimes you want the meat and this and that. But when you look at the plate holistically, it's a full plate that's wholesome. I'd yeah. like to think that my contribution in people lives it's is wholesome. wholesome. And the, the different choices is not that I don't know who I am or that I'm schizophrenic. No. But that sometimes when we interact with people, they require a different side of us. I might need to be direct with you about something. I need to be a little bit softer maybe with someone else. I might need to be encouraging in another space. But all those things tie into one picture, which is who I am. So I'd say seven colors, I think. <laughs> I relate to that <laughs> because every time people ask me about myself, I never know, like, what should I tell you? Because, and I describe myself as an all-rounder so yeah. I completely understand your definition of being a seven colors because you have all the offerings that people are looking for for different reasons and if you were to be a cocktail oh frozen margarita <laughs> <laughs> party central baby and that's maybe a side that people don't know about me I am a good time <laughs> and I love being with people who are a good, good time. time and they're not yeah. looking at you going Oh, oh. man. Sweetie, Miss S18 was very many years ago. I am an adult who pays taxes. <laughs> I'm sure I can drink a frozen margarita and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. So you've told me about the, uh, the many hats that you wear. Sure. I've seen you on a lot of, um, you know, the things that you do. Another side of you is that you're a mother. Oh, my favorite job in the world. Yeah. And it's a job, let me tell you. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what they said about like mommyhood being the coolest hood. It's a cool hood, but it's a hard hood to be yo, in. Yo, yo, yo. You have to be, yeah. you have to thug it out for the most part. Yes, I, actually, yeah. that's the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, you, you have to it thug out. it out. But I think the best part about being a mom, two things. One is seeing these little humans grow and become their own individuals and knowing that I have a small contribution to that is insane. It actually blows my mind. And the second part of that is I'm the most blessed at having the most incredible support system. 
I don't think very many people can survive doing it on their own. Mm -mm. And so when you have a village of people, about that, because yeah. it's such a huge blessing. So that's something that I love the most. And it's actually helped me grow as a person as well to be a mom. Mm -hmm. Patience, number one. <laughs> And then to learn not to sweat the small stuff. Yeah. You know how kids just like will see something so small and be so captivated by it and excited by it and mesmerized by it. So I think having kids has also helped me to slow down a little bit and enjoy, you know, the, the smaller things in life. And for you? For me, that's exactly the same. Yeah. So what really shocked me about um, having a baby is that I didn't know. It's almost like they come in your life yeah. and then they create a, a, a place that you didn't know existed. Yeah. And you're like, how did I not know this joy exists? Like, yeah. for me, I really cannot even fully describe the joys of raising a child. And for me, what it yeah. has taught me, it has taught me that no one never really knows what they're doing. Fully. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. Fully. <laughs> fully. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me say fully. Yeah. Kids have taught me that there's so much that you think you know, mm. but not really. And it, it makes you open and yeah. willing to learn from others. Yeah. So I'll tell you another thing that I think is pretty dope. When I look at like all the different women that have worked with the Kosi Kosi brand mm. and you realize that there's also so many different kinds of mothers. Yes. You could be a working mom. You could be a stay-at-home mom. You could be a single parent. You could be one that has a support system. Um, but everyone has a role to play in society. And when we tell our stories, we help encourage other people to know that, one, they're not alone, mm -hmm. and two, that they're seen, and three, It'll be okay. Yeah. I always say to moms, like, if you have not had that good cry in the shower, <laughs> you, you're not momming properly yet. Yeah, yeah, you have not <laughs> you know, seen like, anything. Oh my God. <laughs> it's all falling apart. Come yeah. fetch these kids. And then and then you get it out of your system and then you brush yourself off and you keep going. And we're, we're still standing. Isn't that dope? Yeah. <laughs> what I also love, what you just mentioned now, is the support. Mm -hmm. I've also had the same level of support. Listen, my mom, I would break down yes. if anything were to happen to my mom because she's really the glue to a lot of it. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking to myself, it, it, women must understand that it's okay for them to go through all those feelings of postpartum depression. That sure. happens a lot when you don't have the support system because... And, and there has been studies done that women that don't have support after they had given birth, they are most likely to fall into depression. And it makes sense because that level of support you really sure. need as a new mom. And for us to have that support, mm. I, I'm telling you, really, I'm grateful for that level of support because being a yeah. mom, oh, it doesn't come with a manual. I actually think that we must also remember that postpartum depression can also actually be a chemical thing. Yeah. So sometimes you may have the support, but the chemical response in your body results that that should be what you experience. So I think it's also important for us to start opening the spaces up a bit more where we can actually talk about needing some external help. Mm. So whether it's a therapist, whether it's medication, whether it's a little bit of downtime and you go from this time till that time, someone else is looking after the kid. Like we should not be embarrassed or ashamed or afraid to ask for help when we need it, regardless of what kind of help that is. That's why it exists so that we can leverage and benefit from it because I think a lot of times people want you to be a super mom. Well, first of all, I don't even know what that looks like because that would be different for every person. But yeah. even if you don't feel like that all the time, you're still a great mom. Yeah. And we need to hear that sometimes because it just... La Lela. <laughs> Do you have a frozen margarita? <laughs> yeah. You look... I don't see you looking different from what I've seen you almost a decade ago. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You still look like a young girl. <laughs> what do you do to stay in the shape that you are, to look this good, mothering two kids? Like, what do you do to keep yourself looking the way you do? So two parts to answer your question. The first one is I have that challenge a lot where people still hold on to the past of me being Miss S18 and thinking that I'm young. I'm Yay. 35 with two children and I've been married. I'm an adult, <laughs> you know. So sometimes the perspective people have when they deal with me is they think it's a younger person yeah. when really it's not. 
Um, and really the other part is just staying active. I don't, I don't think I'm militant about anything. I do everything in moderation. I gym in moderation. I eat in moderation, sometimes not always. And then I get back on the wagon. Um, I find what has really helped me a lot is a lot of the times I do more vegetarian food. It's actually my preference, but it just works out better to my blood type anyway. Um, I love being out and about with the kids. Um, hiking with friends. So a mix of a mix of stuff. Yeah. I, I really don't believe in that you must be on a strict schedule about everything because you won't enjoy life. Yeah. Everything is a part of the experience, including the food and the, you know, new parts of things that you want to explore and discover um, and all of that. I think I did way too much in my early 20s of being super focused on the external, what I look like. Like, I'm happy and I'm healthy. Yeah. And that's the most important combination for me. I need I needed to hear that from mm. a bigger sister because I'm mm. there now. Like, I'm the one who gyms. Listen, when I miss the gym, I'm like, oh, my God, my life is going to crumble. Yeah. If I miss a meal, I'm like, oh, my yeah. So I'm very strict with my gym schedule, my, yeah. my eating, my diet. If you enjoy, enjoy it, it, that's one thing. I enjoy it. But if it starts to feel like punishment oh. to you, remember that will that will impact the mental state that you perceive the thing you're yeah. doing. Because if I feel like I'm being punished, I'm not... I'm not responding positively to it anyway. So why will I do it? Yeah. Like I'll be skinny, but I'll be unhappy. Unhappy. I don't yeah. want to be unhappy. <laughs> like ever. Like I'm a jovial person. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it's important for us to remember, don't feel like you have to do something that really feels ugly, unpleasant, and like punishment to you for an extended period of time. Yeah. I'm not saying don't have discipline. Yeah. Those are two different things. <laughs> yeah, those are, yeah. And I'm not saying don't be consistent, but I'm saying don't punish yourself and feel like I must have only four carrots. I must have three of this. And, and the reason I share this so openly is that when I was a teenager, I actually had an issue with an eating disorder. Oh, really? Like I mentioned, being in a school where people didn't look like me and, and I'm curvy and shapely and they were a different shape. And so I thought, oh, is there something wrong with me? Because they all look like that. And I would eat so little and I would exercise all the time to try and be this shape that I'm not naturally built to be. Yeah. And I wish someone had told me earlier that, you're fine. that people are different, yeah. bodies are different, like enjoy the experience. Like I just don't want any person to um, to, to put themselves under that pressure. It's not worth it. It it's really isn't. It's really not. Yeah. So love yourself in your shade and shape. Because you're beautiful. A hundred percent. Once more, you are beautiful, draped in your Kosi Kosi design. You literally Thank look you. like a Kosa queen. I literally, if Kosi Kosi made pajamas, I would live Listen, in I was telling you the whole thing that Kosi, listen, my entire wardrobe can be Kosi Kosi. Please, I want the gyms. I want yeah. the gym outfits. I want all of it, please. And it's so interesting because we've been on this journey together when, when, when the business was still kind of, not start, like it had already started, but I... I joined them like early on mm. and they were still making like skirts that had like a matching bow thing to put around <laughs> the head and to see how it's evolved and grown and included so many people and celebrated so many people over the years it actually blows my mind yeah. and it gives me so much pride that two young black people have done this like yeah. award-winning business that came from a partnership that is so solid Consistent. it is literally such inspiration to anyone who knows anything about what this business means yeah. um and i truly wish them like everything of the very best from here to the world baby to the world <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much oh, for joining me today. So you much. are so lovely. You are beautiful. That you look like I said you look like a Kosa queen when you walked in. <laughs> and that's exactly who you look like. Thank you. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us on this episode and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>